Welcome back to Nuclear News. We are diving into exactly what is going on in the nuclear energy space in early stage industries. And nuclear energy, in terms of mass global adoption and usage, is still in the early stages, right? Based on the demand projections. So in this video, we're going to cover demand projections, what exactly is going on with the future growth for these assets. And obviously, we're going to start out with some price action, right? Because the market is just starting to understand what is going on with this space, right? Sprott Uranium Miners ETF up 45% year to date. The S&P 500 up 15.7%. That is the benchmark asset. So Uranium Miners are massively outperforming the broader stock market. Now, let's, again, understand why annual utility uranium requirements this comes from denison mines so this is their projection for demand in pounds per year right we have 250 million pounds per year by 2040 the covered demand is the amount of demand that can actually be covered by the projected output of uranium, the mined uranium. That's their projection. I and mean, again, these guys are big players. They understand the industry. They're saying the gray piece is the part that can actually be met by the supply. The uncovered demand is the green, and that is the supply gap, right? So there's a massive demand for the scarce above ground fuel that is going to power the nuclear space. So that's their projection. Let's go into one week's worth of development into the demand for the fuel that's going to power nuclear energy. To start, we had one negative headline, right? We rarely cover negative headlines because there's so few of them, but there was one this week. So let's talk about exactly what happened with this headline and what it means for the nuclear space. Idaho SMR project terminated utah-based municipal power systems and new scale power corporation have mutually agreed to terminate the carbon-free power project the project to build new scale small modular reactor units at a site near idaho falls have been penciled in for operation by 2029 despite significant efforts by both parties to advance the C cfpp it appears unlikely that the project will have enough subscription to continue toward development. So what this does is lower, actually, the future demand for uranium by the amount that this one SMR would use up, right? So that's one SMR project. Just this week, let's see if there are any other new SMR projects that would radically offset this one negative headline, if not exponentially boom the demand for uranium for SMR projects. Polish and Romanian companies confirm commitment to SMRs amidst CFPP cancellation fallout. So two companies confirming their commitment to SMRs. There's some talk that SMRs aren't investable just based on this one event, right? Well, again, two companies are investing in it. Study to consider SMR deployment at Halden, a new company has been founded by this Norwegian company and the municipality of Halden to investigate the construction of nuclear power plant based on small modular reactors at Halden, right? A research reactor once operated in Halden, Norway. So we have Norway investigating it. 12 countries request permission to install small modular reactors, small nuclear reactors in the EU. So that's 12 countries trying to install multiple small modular reactors in the EU. So that offsets that one negative headline and then exponentially booms the demand for nuclear power and its fuel. So one point for the anti-SMR crowd and then like 50 points for the pro-SMR crowd. And that's not even counting in what the future of this space looks like. Marine-based small modular reactors could help steer us toward net zero by offering resilient and sustainable nuclear power. This is from the International Atomic Energy Agency. These floating powerhouses can operate 24-7, replacing fossil fuels in remote regions and contributing to decarbonization efforts, right? So we're still in the early stages. Obviously, if you want to look out, it's more like a thousand points for the pro-SMR team and one point for the anti-SMR team. Rolls-Royce, UK SMR company, eyes deployment of reactor fleet in the Netherlands. Reactor fleet in the Netherlands by Rolls-Royce. New agreement announced with Dutch construction firm, right? Exponential growth there. 
Companies to explore production using Rolls-Royce small modular reactor. So clean hydrogen companies, right? Partners aim to pair nuclear energy with a solid oxide electrolyzer cell. And then coal to nuclear, right? The Department of Energies, Mike Goff, joined today's Project Phoenix launch in Slovakia. The event was hosted by the State Department, right? Pretty elite, important organization. And included reps from 17 countries in the region focused on transitioning coal plants to small modular reactors to meet future clean power and so that is, if you really project out now, now we're getting into the tens of thousands of points for the pro SMR team and only one point for the anti SMR team, right? That's the scorecard in one week for SMRs and for the demand of nuclear power. And we're not even done. Support for nuclear energy higher than ever, poll suggests 80% in Belgium want to extend operational lifetimes of reactors. Hedge fund boss calls for more investment in nuclear power. This is not just your typical Wall Street guy. This is one of the most influential, wealthy people on the planet. Ken Griffin, founder and chief executive hedge fund Citadel, has called for more investment in nuclear power in the West. China is one of the few countries making a huge investment in nuclear again. We desperately need, desperately need nuclear power in the West, right? He he understands what's going on. He's saying we're desperate for it. The Illinois Senate passes bill lifting ban on next generation nuclear reactors, right? They were banned. Well, they're not anymore and they won't be. And so huge win. Then we have governments around the world investing in this space. This comes from Global Atomic via John Quakes. We are pleased to report that the US government has expressed support for the project financing to proceed. And both development banks have been authorized to re-engage with the company and finalize funding arrangements. Again, the US government investing heavily into nuclear. Switzerland's another government. Switzerland to keep using nuclear energy longer than expected. Spain's business lobby calls for extension of nuclear power. South Africa's first mini nuclear reactor plan for the Western Cape. And so exponential growth in demand for nuclear power in just one week. It's hard to verbalize exactly how massive this is for the world and for the nuclear space, just one week's worth of activity. So I'll let your imagination fill in the rest.